You're listening to the Monster Sci Fi Show. Hello, and welcome once more to the Monster Sci Fi Show. I am your host, the one and only Monster. For today's topic, I'm going to be talking about the Walking Dead series. This is a graphic novel series that has really floored me. I can't speak enough about it. I've read 11 volumes within a two-week span. And those who know me know that I really don't read that fast on anything. But given the subject matter and the graphic novel format, it was a pretty great ride. And I don't want it to end. And thankfully, it's not going to end. And I'll talk about that at towards the end of the podcast. But this series, written by Robert Kirkman, is about Rick Grimes, who is a small-town police officer from Kentucky, who, with his partner, are trying to apprehend the bad guy. And in the midst of a shootout, Rick gets shot and goes into a coma. From that point on, we don't know how long Rick has been in a coma, but he wakes up in a hospital and it's dead. Literally dead. Dead bodies everywhere. He's walking out of the hospital again. Dead bodies are everywhere. So we find out something has happened to the world that he was lost in. He gets hit over the head in the sho- with a shovel from a father and son survivor team. And they kind of clue him in to the fact of what had happened and the fact that the world's been now overrun by zombies. He finds out that the government had told, you know, many people to go to the large cities and this, and Atlanta being the closest to the Kentucky one, that his possible family, his, his son and his wife could have possibly went to Atlanta. Being a police officer, he goes back to the police station, gathers whatever supplies he needed, and heads to Atlanta to look for his family. Unfortunately, Atlanta is decimated. And it gets more overrun by zombies. Luckily for Rick, he is rescued, or at least it's helped out by a guy named Glenn. And Glenn is able to not only take him out of Atlanta, but back to the camp with other survivors, and lo and behold, his wife and son are there as well. That may be the end and all of the whole series, but it doesn't really begin to really get at the the core of the story. Now, zombies themselves really don't do much. They're not that scary, but when you see a horde of them, I don't care how strong you are, you're going to, you know, crap your pants, no matter what. But in this series, even though zombies do attack, and really gory stuff, it's not the focus of the book itself, or the the entire series for that matter. When I compare this series to Lost, and if you follow Lost, you'll know that the island itself where everyone had crash landed, became secondary. It wasn't as important as the people themselves, the characters, and how they dealt with being on the island with each other and their whole backstory and how they got to that point. That was completely fascinating. Now, we're not going to get to that kind of complexity with the cast of characters, but the people themselves are fascinating. And it's because of certain things that they do is even more thought-provoking. For example, we have Rick, who is a police officer. Granted, that doesn't amount to much in a world full of zombies, but he does represent the law and order of whatever survivors, whatever community that he is a part of. And there's a certain understanding about that. 
we do it every day from observing stop signs to traffic lights to, you know, not doing crime, not doing harm to each other. The world that Rick was in to the world that Rick is in now, that's completely gone. It's out the door. So, not everybody is on the same page. That's what's scary. And you get to have choices that you may not want to do. There was something that I was reading in my um, DC Guide to Writing Comics. There was a quote from Robert McKee, who is a script writing guru. And I'm just paraphrasing here, but it said something to the effect about the true nature of ourselves is revealed through the choices that we make. Now, a lot of people in the course of the story sometimes feel it's better to leave the group, let them fend for themselves, screw the others. You know, they're just slowing them down. Then you have really screwed up people like the governor. And I'm not going to get too much into details about the governor. But oh my god, you can't believe how insane people get when they put under a lot of stress. I don't know how this person got to be in that state of mind, but the horrific stuff that he did, unspeakable. Now, the other thing that I was thinking about with this series, with any good book that I read or a great movie that I watch, Sometimes I kind of mull it over my head and reabsorb it and reanalyze it. It kind of makes even better sense in, in certain terms. In college, and still in college, I came across something called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Basically, it's a five pyramid model of what our needs are. And in a certain order, this is how we react in situations. So, the top of the order is self-actualization. And basically, this is personal growth and fulfillment. Below that, we have esteem needs. We have, under in, in that bracket, we have achievement. We have status, responsibility, reputation. Below that, we need to have belongingness and love needs we need to have family attention relationships work groups etc the fourth one is going to be safety needs there we have to have protection security order law limits stability and the last one the very big one biological and physiological needs basic life needs so we're looking at air food drink shelter warmth sex, sleep. Under those headings, in the midst of the Walking Dead series, the last one plays very important because everyone needs to have food, everyone needs to have shelter, warmth, even sex gets played a lot into the series. Safety needs, definitely yes, a big concern because everyone needs to have protection, they need to have security, not so much law, because the problem lies is that within a band of people, they can be civil to each other. But other people, again, may have different thoughts on how to act. And, of course, stability, with the zombies always attacking, that's always in flux. So, that's always kind of making that second need kind of not stable enough. From that point on... There's not going to be much from that point up. You can't be listening to this podcast when the world outside has gone to hell. When the zombies are banging on the door, you know, you really don't care that you want to be an inspiring writer. You want to protect yourself. You want to make sure you have shelter. You want to make sure you have food and clothing. So, you know, your basic needs have to be met first. Once everything has been met, the next level takes place, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. So right now, me doing a podcast, that's my personal growth. That's my self-actualization. 
So again, looking at the series, it doesn't really go past the second to last need. And I don't see it getting any better, at least not yet. What I love about the series up to this point is that we still don't know all the details on how the zombies came. We don't know how long they are going. We get some little clues here and there about some zombies getting weaker. We know that depending on the attack, you might be able to survive a zombie attack. Or if you get turned into a zombie, sometimes that time to convert or turn over varies. So we still don't know a great deal about that. But again, like the Lost Island, that's in the background. And honestly, as long as they keep coming up with interesting stuff for these characters to do, let the zombies play in the background. Let it stretch out as long as it can. I'm having a great time with that. Now, as I said earlier, I read up to Volume 11. Volume 12 just came out recently. Volume 13, I think, is coming out in November. And come October 31st, which is extremely exciting for me, Halloween, of course, there's going to be a Walking Dead TV series. If you've not heard about this, AMC is going to air six episodes of this series. And Frank Darabont is going to do the directing for the first episode and be uh, serve as the, sh as the series showrunner as well. If you haven't heard of Frank Darabont, if you've not seen Stephen King's The Mist, the last five minutes really nails my nomination. If I was going to hire someone based on that movie, Frank gets it. In with the Walking Dead series and that missed last five minutes makes perfect sense to hire him. It's it's it leaves you breathless. So aside from that, he did mention on August thirty first, and it's not official, but that the Walking Dead series has has been picked up for a second series and for another thirteen episodes, but that has yet to be confirmed. So in any case it looks as if everything is going to be heading in the right direction. So I'm wondering about how much AMC is willing to push the envelope with the Walking Dead series. I mean, for for all intents and purposes, AMC is not the FX channel in which you see a lot more adult material, even some brief nudity, adult language, and so forth. I'm curious as to how it's going to be. But from the trailer itself to the fact that Frank is now running the show and Gail Ann Hurd, who is the producer of the series. If you don't know her, Gail has worked as executive producer for the Terminator series. She's done Aliens. She's done The Abyss. And even more importantly, she's a friend of mine, a friend of mine on Facebook. And I did email her once to find out if she was indeed the Gail and her, the producer. And she did write me back. You know, it's like, yes, I am. So, yeah, I, I know she's not my friend, but that's not the point. The point is, is that she's attached to this project. And I'm, I cannot wait to watch the series. So, I'm going to end it here. I'm curious to find out about your reactions. If you have not read the series, please take the time. Probably we'll do another podcast after the six episodes are done with. So if you'd like to send me an email, send it to monster sci fi show at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Facebook. Just type into your search box the Monster Sci Fi Show and there's my fan page. So I hope to hear from you soon. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Good night, folks.